Hey there, thank you very much for joining me again. It's Wednesday, so this is my regular uh, noontime live stream. I'm going to show today a step-by-step -step process for implementing your own custom articulations in the new Cubase 14 score editor. So let me provide a little bit of background on this for either those who haven't worked with expression maps or who are maybe new to or considering getting the Cubase 14 score editor. Cubase 14 just released last week, and I think it was last week, and uh, it, it has this radically updated um, score editor feature, so you can look at your MIDI now in terms of a score. You can see it on the staff. And the presentation of that new score editor has a lot in common visually with Dorico, which Steinberg also makes. And the visual similarities don't always uh, hold up in terms of workflow. So in other words, if you are a really experienced Dorico user, it's likely that you'd find some things a little um, confusing when you work in the score editor and likewise. For those users of the score editor uh, prior to Cubase 14, this is a radical change and uh, you know, from what I understand is, is, is quite a new thing. But here's where I really want to focus today is that let's say you've got a sample library and in, in my case, which I'm going to demonstrate here, I've got a Marcato long and a Marcato short sample. Um, but those are not two of the default um, presets that are available in the score editor in Cubase 14. So when I go into the Cubase 14 score editor, I don't actually see a Marcato long and Marcato short that I can assign to my notes. Now in Dorico, as a Dorico user, I'm used to setting up custom playing techniques and I can go about creating whatever I want to match my sample library, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. This would work with any sample library, whether you were using sign player or contact or another sampler. Um, Dorico provides a foundation for a very flexible foundation for setting up literally any playing technique. Now in the score editor, uh, you don't see any indications of that and Cubase doesn't seem to doesn't seem to present us with a way to set up custom playing techniques. So hey there Rich, thank you very much for joining me today. So we want in the score editor in Cubase 14 a way to set up that Marcato long and Marcato short. Fortunately, there is a way. Um, it's just going to be different and it's a different paradigm from the way it is in Dorico. And that's the main advantage of my video today is for those of you out there like me who work with both Dorico and Cubase, then uh, you can see how to do this. So I've got a little example here. I'm going to take myself off the screen and play it back for you so you can hear what it sounds like. Sorry, let me... Uh Go ahead and make sure I got the right window selected. Here you go. Okay, so this is what the notation looks like. We've got this uh, eighth note going into like a little legato phrase. There's three little legato phrases here. You can see some staccato notes and then some naturals. Now the thing that I really wanted to do here is I want staccatissimo on this first note, but I want this note to play actually with a marcato long sample rather than a regular sustain. And these are marcato shorts, the quarter notes. These are staccatos, the eights are all staccatos except for this staccatissimo at the beginning. And then this last note, the, the long note here, I actually want that to be a long sustain note. So I'm trying to basically use uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five samples, five samples that I'm combining here, but I want my notation to be readable. Um, I could give this notation to a horn player and they'd understand what I was looking for because the notes are nicely grouped and I also have the staccato markings and the staccatissimo and I know that what they're going to play in the real world sounds a lot more like my marcato short and long samples than it does sound like my sustains, even though uh, traditionally, the default would just be that all of these whole notes and half notes, dotted half notes, would be played with sustains. So that's the challenge, is how do I get that to play back? Now in Dorico, I set up an expression map. I use something called channel switching, where 
Um, the Instead of using key switches, which are very common to sample libraries and people who are doing this kind of work, I use channel switching, so I have instruments on unique channels. And then I switch between the various articulations using a CC value. This poses a problem, especially the CC value. So if you do this, it's really important to realize that once you're in Cubase, once, say, you've exported a little bit of MIDI from Dorico and you've got it in Cubase, CCs in a Cubase world are channel specific. Um, what that means is, let me show you what it sounds like. Um, I've got an expression map loaded up here, but I'm going to just take the map off. And what we're going to see here is now it sounds very different when it plays back. I mean, of course, the melody is the same and all that, but I'm not getting the right playback, and that's because there's, it's not switching samples, staccato samples and marcato long and shorts. Um, if we look at this in the key editor, we'll see that all, my, um, all of my CC data was imported from Dorico. So I've got CC70. This is the CC that uh, the orchestral tools sign player uses to um, choose between articulations with a CC instead of a key switch. Expression uh, and modulation CC 1 and 11, these are very typically used across the board in almost all sam professional sample libraries uh, for exactly that, for dynamics, which usually switches between uh, velocity layers and expression, which is sort of a volume, basically a volume. I'm not going to get into those uh, exactly right now because that's a deep topic that I'm expecting a lot of people watching this video have some familiarity with already. But the trick is down here, this these CC70 values are actually switching between things like Marcato long and Marcato short. The problem is that these, no, these CC values here are not looking at um, the note that's playing and what's that value. In other words, it's sending all of these values are being sent on channel one. The problem in my case is that marcados are sent on channel 4 and staccatos are channel 3. So it's always sending this to channel 1. It doesn't help me switch between marcado longs and marcado shorts. So CCs are all channel specific and they go out whatever the channel is uh, on the track. And if you have any selected, it's going to go out one. It's not going to go out all. And even if it did go out all, you'd have the same problem. You'd be getting undesirable and unreliable results. Part of what I'm hoping to convey in this live stream is a reliable workflow, a way for you to set this up and know what you're going to hear, know what you're going to get. So if we set up an expression map in Cubase, now we get some control over that. So over here, once you've got your track selected, you can go to the expression map uh, sort of area over here, which is under the inspector. And you can set up a new expression map by clicking on this cog right here, and that brings you here. Now I've got a handful of expression maps already set up, but the one I'm using for this demo, I just uh, conspicuously titled My Horn Expression Map. And it's just got these, um, it's got a natural, which is really a default. I labeled it natural, uh, that, that is inconsequential to our discussion, except that natural is what Dorico calls uh, essentially its, its basic default articulation. And it's nice to have it there, but it doesn't do anything. Um, it sends out on channel one with a CC70 value of zero, and that in my configuration happens to just be a regular sustain. But the thing is now that when I mark a note as marcato long or marcato short, you can see up here that the CC70 value for short is nine, but the value for long is eight. And what this means is that it's actually going to send that value for just that note. In other words, down here in the CC lane, this is all going to channel one. But when I mark this, this note here as marcato long, in addition to sending it out of the right channel, it is also um, sending that CC value of 70 
along with just this note, and then it's sending a different CC value for just this note and just this note. It allows me control to make sure that the notes are not only being sent on the right channel, but getting the right CC70 value for channel switching as I have it configured. And if you have any questions about my configuration or about your configuration and how this might work, please do put it in the comments. All right, so now that I've got my expression map set up, and I, let me just kind of look at that a little more closely with you so that anybody doing this can, can see how it's done. Let's say that I, um, I don't have a Marcato short. Let's go ahead and just delete that. And I'm going to click, I, I want to add a Marcato short. So this is if you wanted to add your own custom articulation that you're using in the score editor. Go ahead here. I'm just going to call it Marcato short. Um, I'm going to choose not a regular articulation, but down here I'm going to click on Add Custom Articulation. And this is because there's, not a mar there's no marking traditionally in music that represents a marcato short. There's just a marcato indicator. And I'm going to actually make one here. I'm going to just go in text, and I'm going to go with MS for marcato short. You can see I've also created ML for marcato long. And it's going to be an attribute, so it means that uh, it's only going to pertain to the note that it's assigned to. So now, Marcato Short, what does that mean? Well, in my case, Marcato Short would need to go out on channel 4, and I would need to send a CC value. You could use this note on value, by the way, for key switches. That's why it defaults to that. But in my case, I'm using a controller, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to controller 70, which is just my configuration. These are not universal. These are just my configuration. Um, Marcato short, and then to get short as opposed to long, I use a CC value of 9. So short is on 8, or sorry, long is on 8, and short is on 9. But you'll notice that both of these Marcatos are going out on channel 4. Both of my staccatos are going out on channel 3. They just have different CC7 values. And then the legato is going out on channel 1, but has a CC value of 7, whereas my natural has a CC value of 0. Once I have these set up uh, and I've assigned this expression map to my track, let's go check this out. So I come up here and I go ahead and I assign my new expression map. I want to point out here that uh, if you open up the expression, uh, sorry, the score editor, let's go ahead and open up the full score editor window, which is definitely the more flexible window. You'll notice over here, if you're a Dorico user, that there is the playing techniques. But, you know, you will not see your custom articulations here. You have no way to set these up. You can't add them here. Uh, and the ones that I've just added into my expression map they also don't show up anywhere here. Okay, so how do I set them? What do I do about this? Well, once I've selected a note here, and you can see that it's selected because it's highlighted orange, you get the usual info bar up here, and I can actually see everything that I had set up in my expression map here. So now I can say, okay, that first note is staccatissimo. This next note, I want it to be marcato long. These two are staccatos. This is a marcato short. <coughs> Excuse me for sneezing. <coughs> Hopefully you didn't blow everybody's ears away there, but sometimes I sneeze when I'm doing expression maps. I'm allergic to them. So the setup here is that you are using expression maps in Cubase to manage all of your um, unique articulations, articulations that are custom made. So it's a different workflow from Dorico where you would actually be able to set up these custom playing techniques and you'd actually see them over there in your menu. You could actually drag and drop them over onto your score. That doesn't exist here. In order to set them up, you have to set them up in a Cubase expression map and then you want to select them from the info bar just like I did here. So now with this expression map, you can see that actually it sounds, well, you'll hear, it sounds a lot better. Oh, I don't want that on loop. All 
Now let's just look at the Darko equivalent of this, because I wanted to point out a couple of things. You can actually see down here, if you're familiar with Darko, um, you'll actually see the different uh, playback techniques, Marcato short, staccato, Marcato long, sustain, all here in my playing uh, technique lane. And that's because I assigned them uh, already an expression map. I'm not going to go into the expression map of Darko and how I set that up because this is just about Cubase. But I did want to show that when I exported this MIDI that I had written first in Darko and I exported it to Cubase, you'll notice that, for example, um, it turned my 16th note here into an 8th note. So it's a 16th note in Darko, but it, it rounded it out for some reason to an eighth note. Maybe that is due to the quantizing settings for this, maybe the default quantize settings. But just be aware that sometimes that might change or you'll need to make sure you configure Cubase to import that correctly. It also did not wrap the slur around my first note there, right? So you can see that I've got the legato slur across all these notes, but when I imported it, it was only uh, here. Um, also, the dynamics are not being saved here, so I would have to go back and reconstruct this. So there were a few differences in how Cubase uh, interpreted the, uh, the import from Darko. Let's see if there are um, any other things that I wanted to talk about. Essentially... I'll just wrap this up with with a sort of a, a few pointers to keep in mind. You cannot set up custom playing techniques, at least as far as I can see, in the Cubase 14 score editor. But really, that's a moot point because you can set up whatever articulations you want in a Cubase expression map, assign it to the track, and then use the info bar in Cubase to assign those articulations to any notes. And then you get exactly the playback you want. That's one important takeaway. Another important takeaway is that not everything, especially the dynamics, is going to port over when you do an export from Darko and you import into Cubase. Um, that's another important takeaway. And uh, the third and final main takeaway, which for me was an important, um, and very important because I rely on that CC70 value to switch between different articulations of the same type, maybe a sustain with an accented attack versus a sustain with a normal attack. Being able to switch between those requires, in my setup, a CC70 value with the orchestral tools sign player. And once your MIDI is in Cubase, the default is that a CC value goes out to whatever, to usually channel one only. So if you're using channel switching, you really have to go into the expression map and set up both a channel for each articulation and that CC value, and then it reconstructs the way that Q, or the way that Darko's flexible expression maps work for my setup. I know a lot of people who have watched my channel for some time probably familiar with this idea of channel switching. So um, that's just an important takeaway here. If you have questions about the score editor, um, I know some people have posted some questions already and I haven't taken note of them. I'm trying to consume this stuff as fast as I can and share it with you guys. But if you have questions about something I covered here or other things that you are curious about, by all means, please put them in the comments and I will take note of that and I'll do my best to, um, to answer that in the upcoming uh, live streams. I'm very happy with Cubase 14. I highly recommend it to users of Darko who also are using Cubase. I don't think there's any risk of it taking over from Darko at all. Darko is by far the preferred platform I have for writing notation of all kinds, but it's nice to have this in Cubase now. It gives me a lot more flexibility to work in the score. Thanks again for everybody joining me today and watching the video. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe, and I will try and see you guys again on Friday. Thanks.